Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of two poetry collections. I was kindly sent both of these by Isabel Kenyon of Fly on the Wall Press. So uh, we have House of Weeds by Amy Charlotte Keane, illustrated by Jack Wallington. And here we have Self Portrait by Elizabeth Horan. So I'm going to start with House of Weeds. Uh, so we don't really have blurbs for these. I mean, they have intro letters. Um, I didn't really tab it out as something I wanted to read out. But basically the premise here, as you can kind of tell from the title, is very much based on um, plants, basically, plant life. Um, yeah, it tells a story about plants and whatnot. And all the poems are named after plants. We have these really beautiful illustrations inside as well. So I'm going to read you some to give you a feel. So this is Anagalis Arvensis, Scarlet Pimpernel. Glutton for punishment, love the Gemini. The allure of double living, violent contradictions that bury the soul. The positive reinforcement of a rubber mask. Hidden spots of salamander you can feel before you see. Soothing and translucent as soft melon in midsummer. Gemini's pounce. When succumbed, it's easy to be tricked into thinking gods and monsters are the same thing. And I wanted to read that one because I am a Gemini. I wanted to show you this image here. I just think it's this one here, one of my favourites. Here we have, I just thought this poem was interesting because of the subject matter and who it kind of picks as its hero, if that makes sense. Especially because it's written by a woman as well. Um, so I'm going to read it out. Uh, Polypodium vulgar, uh, fern. Here, here, here we go. As a youth, you'd never wish to be the creep, that shady character. The moment you realise I am him, you twig and lift. Black stalks outgrowing. It smacks you like a heavy spade. Your childhood essentially decimated. Yet you creep further to the dullest, harshest corners and thrive there. It's a shame, but own it. Perhaps it was predestined, like an astrologer's surprise birthday buffet. I mean, someone has to be me. How would the rest of you feel normal? Here we have uh, Budlia Davidi, a butterfly bush. Another beautiful illustration here. I don't look for danger, but I need to know it's close. Like on a rooftop, drunk and heavy, tipped by cheeky winds. I wish to be a standalone specimen in waste grounds, dancing in the dark like a purple butterfly, like no one's watching. No one's watching. I'll find an abandoned building to wrestle myself in, make my shadow big and intimidating with long snout and horns. It will look broad and sinister, but we'll both know our secret. Hi, we'll paint the walls with fevered streaks of royal red. Am I most magnificent? I am tutti frutti ornamental. Can re-nature a space without even trying. I need to know that at any moment, anything could happen. It is the only way I think I can stay alive. Life is simpler when you don't think too much. I don't want to die, I just need to know it's possible. I thought this was cool here, uh, Fumaria officinalis, common fumatory. When the night stretches like a hairnet across unruly afternoons, you want to sleep, it's all you think of. Eyes rubbed wide for a drift that won't settle. You try bamboozing your brain so it slips down the back of your head and into thick fog to gasping clouds. Rainbows smacking like sleet on the translucent smoky glass of a pink submarine. Imagine diving into perfectly carved candy floss, scrambling through, nebula ga stram scrambling through nebulous gates to freedom. The grind of irregular teeth that taste the sweetness of oblivion. The brief respite of a dream. You want to sleep, but it never comes. And here we have Onothera Bionis, Evening Primrose. I remember the first time I died. It was a Saturday, as Saturday is the most common day to die in many ways. Perhaps at the stroke of midnight, what a cliché, I lost feeling. Overdosed on daylight and withered, real dead. Deceased as, the barge, deceased as the baiji white dolphin or dignity. By the morning I was resurrected, like an obvious Jesus or worm cut in half. And then every dusk, as the crafty night lights beckoned and our city's hot borders wumped, it was pre-written. At the height of my euphoria, I dropped down dead. In the morning, as I was born again again, you popped the kettle on and told me to calm down. My dear, I said, holding a glass bowl up to your eyes. I am perfectly calm, and this is what makes you nervous. What is the best rebellion for a woman, they ask. Well, of course, it is to live, I say aloud. It is to really live each day. And I thought this was just a really interesting note in the author bio. I'm not going to read the full thing, but... Her number one best-selling debut book, The Little Girl Who Gave Zero Fucks, is a feminist tale and ode to everyday bravery, hated by the spectator and Trump supporters, and loved by women and men who see the power in worrying less. Her poems, rants, reviews, flash fiction and opinion, and blah blah blah, I'm not going to read the rest of it. I just thought that was a pretty cool little line there. So overall, I did enjoy House of Weeds. Uh, to be honest, to begin with, I didn't really gel with the writing style, but the more I went through it, the more I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed the illustrations in it as well, and the subject matters as well, and the writing style too, really. So overall, I gave like a 3.75 out of 5. 
All right, so next up we have Self-Portrait by Elizabeth Horan. And uh, this starts off with the Frida Kahlo quote, I paint self-portraits because I'm so often alone, because I am the person I know best. And basically, this is like a self-portrait of Frida Kahlo, written from her perspective by Elizabeth Horan. There's also quite a lot of Spanish in this, but I don't speak Spanish, and luckily there are like English translations. And reading the Spanish language of it does actually add value to it as well. It's just hard to figure out how I would go about reading those poems to you, because obviously, do I just read the Spanish? Do I just read the English? Do I read both? But then it's a bit weird. Um, so as before, I'm gonna go through and pick out some of the poems that I enjoyed, but also some of the poems that I thought were possible to read. <laughs> so a few of the poems I wanted to read out. Um, we will start here with Empty Banner 1930. Anarchy is just fine. Take a lap around the pool. Taste the other types of water. Travel communists need linguists. Need your short bob like my Cupid doll. Canary on a balcony. Marx knows, I know. The way a woman's tongue can do things golden dust cannot. Skeleton tape, beware. Come visit me not in San Francisco. No to permito siguermi ai. I do not allow you to pursue me there. There, I long to hiss along her back, be a bone in her vagina. You know her. You know about syringes. Body cast imprints, catheters, orgasms. La serpiente verde, the green serpent. Within this skin, little bluebird, sparkled as sky flies home to DF without having said goodbye. DF, I am assuming, is Diego, right? Here we have Proyecto para Repam on Treya Tapaz, Vol 2, Volume 2, 1931. <laughs> I butchered that. I dream about the time you might have painted my nipple and my spine aligns, that I might sit straight or recline, arching perfectly at the waist, as I saw done by the others. It was all about the angle, your view. And I am not, nor will I ever be, disabled for you. And again, if, if you know a little bit about Frida Kahlo's life, that becomes kind of more poignant too. I hate the way I look, 1933. When I roll the eyes inside my head, I see things I'm glad you are not forced to. Well, this is mild compared to the real inside of me, that which I see. Monster. Failure. Incompetent mother. Not even a mother. A deformed monster. Eater of hearts. Defecator of hearts. Proud Mexican. Ashamed Mexican. Communista. Animal. Broken woman alone in bed. Butterfly. Green-eyed viper watching over. Sister of love. Sister of hate. Hater of men, lover of women, sexual, deformed animal, animal protector, soft bosom for resting small animals, temptress, hideous, Ceniza del Volcan, ash from Popocatapultl, <laughs> Phoenix de Cocoyan, Phoenix of Coyoca, heart in hands, heart detached from chest, no longer pulsing, bloody in, bloody out, so tired, yet never resting. So those are a few of the poems I wanted to read out from this. As I say, it's probably one of those ones that's actually better to either have read to you by the author because she knows how to pronounce all the words, or just to read from the page and to imagine in your head, I suppose. But I did enjoy it. I gave it, again, another pretty solid 3.75 out of 5. And I think this is interesting because it shows that uh, Horan's quite a versatile writer. Um, so her, her previous book that I've read, uh, Alcoholic Betty, was very much about her struggles with alcoholism. And I think this book just sort of shows that she can write about other stuff too, and I think that's really cool. So there we have it. That is two quick reviews of the two poetry books that I was sent by Isabel Kenyon of Fly on the Wall Press. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you think of the sound of these books, which are your poems, the favourites, etc, etc. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.